Well, hello and welcome back to another video. Um, I'm sorry my boating videos have been um, very thin on the ground this year indeed. Um, I kind of haven't got my mojo back, if you like, in into boating yet. I'm sure it will come and um, we'll be doing some videos on that and probably hopefully later on uh, this summer and into autumn. You know, I just haven't, with, with everything that's gone on in my life, it's been uh, sadly put to the back of everything so my apologies if you come to my channel to look at any boating videos uh, but I thought this was of interest um, obviously I've, I've, I try and keep a track of what's going on and um, you know follow things with great interest and um, I've been very concerned I've um, I look at many YouTube channels um, and um, recently there's been quite a lot of people talking uh, re the vintage car um, people who collect them or just own them drive them look after them and um, quite recent older cars as well that this encompasses not just you know cars what we might call vintage, you know, from the 50s, 40s, 30s, etc., or right up to the 70s or 80s. You know, this includes those, even on into the 90s as well. Um, but I can find nothing online um, regarding this that affects boats. And um, I think this is quite an issue that obviously, you know, needs to be looked at and, and needs to be thought about. Anyway, what it is, is um, you might be aware that um, come September in the UK, um, petrol uh, is, is changing. Um, there's going to be a new um, fuel um, called E10 petrol. Sounds more like a, um, a food additive or one of those preservatives that we used to get E numbers, doesn't it? Um, but no, it's going to be E10 and um, I've got one or two facts in front of me, um, so excuse you know, excuse me if I have to you know turn and and um, you know refer to those. Um, but um, E10 is basically the new grade of unleaded petrol that the British government will introduce. I believe it's on the first of September, and. Um, People have been saying that this is potentially going to damage modern and classic uh, car and motorbike engines. Well, as I said, um, from my point of view, you know, I, I can see that. But the angle I'm coming from here is there's an awful lot of boats out there still that have older outboard engines and even more importantly, um, older inboard petrol engines and I just wonder uh, how this E10 fuel is going to affect those. So firstly, trying as always, <laughs> he says laughing, to keep this as brief as possible, I just thought I'd have a look and um, quote, what is E10 petrol? Well, petrol in the UK already contains up to 5% biethanol, um, and that is called E5, um, and that changed, uh, I believe, in, in 2019. But as I say, from September of this year, E10 will become the new standard, and the 10 means that it's now going to contain 10% of bio, bioethanol um, and the bioethanol um, is produced from crops such as sugar beet um, and grown crops. There's quite a few crops that they can you know turn into this bioethanol fuel and um, obviously it's all about emissions, it's all about the government reaching targets and you know Britain to reduce its greenhouse emissions and basically they're saying the journey starts now by introducing this E10 fuel 
they say that CO2 emissions could be reduced by um, 750,000 tonnes per year. That's the equivalent of taking 350,000 cars off the road, which, OK, is all very good. But that doesn't alter the fact that if we have an older engine, be it in a car, motorcycle or a boat, and as I say, that's my take on this on boats, you know, what, what do you do? Um, is it safe um, just to put E10 uh, fuel in an old, um, I mean, a classic example, you have a Freeman 22 uh, or 23 that has a water motor, uh, 1100 Seawolf pre-cross flow or post cross flow, so it is the cross flow model, um, 1100 cc petrol engine. Many still out there, many still going on. Um, many older Freemans even have the 105 Ford, what was the Anglia engine, and even the 100A uh, Ford engine is in some older Freemans. The Vedette petrol from the you know late 50s, early 60s, which I think was basically the Morris Minor engine, a BMC engine, that, that got put into some Freeman Mark 1s. So just looking, you see, there's, there's, and that's just one make of boats. I mean, we, we could, um, Seamasters, had Wotham Blake petrol engines. Um, Fairline, some of the earlier Fairlines had, you know, um, some of the early Volvo uh, petrol engines and um, on into the 70s and 80s. So there's loads of boats out there that still are running on petrol. So what about this E10 fuel? So um, I'll read you this because this is this isn't my thinking. This has been um, researched and um, has been put together by the uh, British Historic Vehicle Club, I believe, some of this um, findings. And um, so I'll, I'll read this out to you. There again, this relates to cars, but we can relate it to, to boats because it's the same thing. In, in, I'll come on to it. In fact, it's some, it could be even worse for boats. Um, it says, although many cars run on E5 um, petrol, which we're using now since 2019, without any significant problems, doubling the amount of ethanol up to 10% in the fuel can cause a variety of issues in older cars. Ethanol is hydroscopic, which means that it absorbs water from the atmosphere and that water in turn finds its way into your car. It can lead to condensation in fuel tanks, fuel lines and carburettors. And, and this is the big plus point, thinking of boats and some of those like the Freemans I've mentioned, it can cause corrosion in brass, copper, lead, tin and zinc components. So, I know from myself, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't know whether it's a few years since I've had a petrol engine Freeman and I don't, I'm unsure what the boat safety certificate insists on these days, but my Freeman 22 and Freeman 23 had um, a brass um, turn off cock. It also had copper fuel lines, um, you know, going right to the carburettor. Um, I think it might have then had a flexi, um, you know, coupling on the last bit. I think that was, um, I don't know where that changed under the boat safety cert, but it certainly had a lot of copper and brass there. So it says, as ethanol is a solvent, it can eat through rubber, plastic, and here's the big thing, and it can eat through fiberglass as well. Um... So obviously, you know, we, boats, um, there were some boats, there again, I don't know whether they're still allowed, but there were some boats made with fiberglass fuel tanks. They are perhaps not allowed anymore anyway. But um, I think, you know, this, this E10 petrol is going to cause an awful lot of issues with people not knowing um, of just, you know, 
what might or what might not be problems uh, further down the road and it goes on to tell me so hoses and seals are likely to perish more quickly because of the higher concentration of ethanol in the E10 fuel. Um, in the Department of Transport tests problems identified included degradation to fuel hoses and seals, blocked fuel filters, damaged fuel pumps, corroded carbs, blocked injectors and corrosion in fuel tanks. Rubber is particularly affected. Um, you know, uh, so obviously this extra ethanol that's being put into um, fuel as of September to make it to this E10, I think could lead you know to substantial difficulties to the uh, older petrol engines in boats um, what i will add and before you know um, we jump to conclusions and and say anything the old e5 petrol so that's just five percent ethanol has to be made available at petrol stations for another five years but the government will then review that and they won't promise that that will then be allowed to roll on two, three, four or another five years. In five years time, that might end and it'll be all this higher rated ethanol fuel. Um, to me, that's quite a worry because uh, the one thing in a boat, particularly a petrol engine boat, is you don't you always want to lessen the chance of any fuel leakage and if this is a solvent and it's going to damage brass copper rubber um, i also read in another article it damages solder um, like um, solder joints tremendously quickly um, so if you have an older engine with a uh, with a float carburetor with a um, a float valve that um, has got been soldered, you know that that within a matter of months that can be ruined. Um, and one wonders, you know, that's the last thing you want to happen on a boat. Any fuel leakage um, from carburetors, fuel lines. Um, into your bilge and I mean that's a huge potential there of, of danger um, basically um, and I think the worrying thing I pick up from this is you know nobody's saying oh yes it's going to happen you know I, I don't think this will happen pretty quickly and I think your engine will run to a point okay on this E10 fuel um, but it's the you know damage that is being done that we can't see and we have to remember that on boats um, engines aren't necessarily you know run a lot are they you know a lot of people still lay boats up or don't use their boats in the winter so tanks sit there with fuel in them fuel lines sit there with fuel in them carbs and engines you know to agree have fuel there you know that is the time, as I can see, where a lot of damage is going to be done. You know, if you're filling your car up every three or four days or every week or every two weeks, you know, you're getting that new supply of fuel through. Whereas on a boat, that doesn't always happen. So I can see great difficulties there, as I say, with, with this um, E10 fuel. Um, and I can see, you know, even more so, you know, with it work with the engine firing okay if it if you put that in your tank and the engine runs but it's the unseen um damage that this extra ethanol could be doing it might not who knows nobody seems to want to make any great claims that it won't or it will you know they're just saying that ethanol is a solvent so it might have this effect on these parts which to me is even worse uh, I will follow this through and if I find anything else out about this um, I should certainly you know post a little update to this video but I just thought that was of interest and you know um, slightly concerning really you know that um, they bring these things in um, without little con you know 
consultation with the groups like the vintage car people I think and as I say boats seem totally forgotten in this um, you know which is seems amazing to me so we shall see what happens anyway and um, as I say if I do find anything else out or learn anything you know I will do a little update um, as always anyway thank you for watching I've gone on quite long enough as always thank you for watching ah uh, please like subscribe whatever um, it's lovely to get your comments and thank you to everybody I really do appreciate them and um, as I say um, if you have any concerns or thoughts about this you might think nothing to worry about you know you might know different to me and think this is not an issue nothing to worry about you know um, I, I'm sure it might not be um, it's just you know I was very concerned what the classic car guys had been saying about this so um, there we go anyway thanks as always and um, we'll catch up with you very soon in another video until then bye for now